so it's an honor to speak with you, Herman. Um, talk about the new album, Two for a Lie. What exactly is the meaning in the title, Two for a Lie? First, I want to say hello and I appreciate you uh, taking your time. Thank and you. um, the meaning behind Two for a Lie, actually, it's kind of like obvious. If you look back in the, in, in the past, or right, especially in these days, uh, as soon as uh, more people, more than two or three people show up, there might be a chance for for a lie. Of uh, there's always a, there's one guy, one guy who's starting lying. And if you <laughs> see the political situation ar around the whole world in the past or in the future or in, right now, oh yeah, right I mean <laughs> that's that's happen right now, <laughs> it, 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 it's happening so often. And also, if you in your microcosmos, you know, I mean, if you talk to some people or outside outside the door there's always two for lying i just hate liars and especially if you're lying for for the big things because uh, i mean you just have to uh, uh, watch the news and then everybody's lying oh yeah oh yeah i, I mean not the news are lying but they always report about people they lied on this sort of thing they lied on that thing and i don't like that and we should go we should maybe we should we should find a way back for the real things and and the truth. Absolutely. Well, you got a video uh, for Teutonic Order, the first song on the new album, and it actually yep. has a video concept that kind of calls back to the Third Reich and kind of some of the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the Nazi era stuff, which, you know, in certain respects, even in America, we're kind of falling into line with a former dictator and people are starting to fall in line and lockstep with his BS, so you know, I kinda, yeah, I kind of get it. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, the the song is all about this Teutonic order that that's just giving people rules that might be wrong, or they give, give giving orders to them they might they might follow the in the wrong direction. You know, uh, to believe in something so much, you are willing to sacrifice your life for it. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, and that, uh, I mean, that was started with the Crusaders and 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 uh, with the conquerors and and these days. And uh, if you see the the wars going on on Earth, it's unbelievable uh, that people are following or uh, still following these kind of leaders. Yeah, even in a pandemic, refusing to get vaccinated or wearing masks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still kind of you're a... absolutely right. <laughs> still kind of a mess. Now, obviously, you have a history with Accept um, on one of the most important albums of all time, Balls of the Wall, as well as when they had the reunion albums for, you know, Blood of the Nation, Stalingrad and Blind Rage. Yeah. What, what prompted you to leave uh, Accept? I started music uh, with composing my own own songs. When I was in the age of 16, I started to compose, to create my own music and, and, and writing some songs. And I missed this kind of feeling that I'm in the situation that I just want to release my solo albums, my stuff I'm uh, I'm coming up with and my music I'm writing. And for, for, first of all, I would like, I just like to play guitar by myself, you know, <laughs> every guitar player wants to show off. <laughs> And it's kind of and, like crazy now, and except Wolf is the only original member. There's like, you know, he's got three guitars, which is awesome. And the new Accept album's fantastic, but it's not Accept. Think so? If I mean, if you need two guys to replace one, wow. <laughs> well, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, haven't, I haven't got a chance to see any live shows yet with three the three guitar players, but may, hey, I'm, I'm quite interesting about this. How they will handle this um, the, the situation, uh, and yeah, Wolf is the last one now. Uh, uh, I saw on Facebook a, actually a, a new video from where's Udo with uh, Peter and yeah, Stefan they're, doing they're something. Yeah, asking about Dirk Snyder and the old gang. What do you think of that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the name. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Yeah. But it's it's, it's kind of like yeah, okay. <laughs> well, the see old what, see the what will happen. I mean, he's got Peter and he's got, you know, he's got, you know, Stefan, but he's also, you know, <laughs> got a female vocalist. So it's a little bit of the old and a little bit of the new. Yeah. And, and Stefan Kaufman is a pretty, really good uh, composer, you know, he's Absolutely. writing awesome music. Absolutely. So there might be an interesting project.
I think so. I think it's good a little. I mean, you know, the, uh, UDO with Udo Derschneider last year did that symphonic uh, orchestrated album that was all based on a German orchestra. So I think it's kind of cool he's going in that yeah. direction. And I think it's, you know, an accept album without Peter Baltas is just so bizarre, you know, that I think it's good at least Peter's working with Udo again, you know. So there's something there. Maybe they talk to each other, and, and everybody's getting older and wiser and calms down a little bit um, these days. You know, um, there are so many. Maybe there have been so many words said, which you, after a couple of years, you might t t talk to yourself, think about what what you got in mind, and say, "Hey, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was right." Uh, life life shows. Right. Life well, goes on. Well, even in the new album, songs like Venom clearly show your, you know, that you played with Accept. You know, like I say, on Ball to Ball, <laughs> that you have that, you know, Teut Teutonic style German riffing. Um, interestingly enough, I just read an article with uh, Malcolm Dome talking about the history and the importance of German metal. Uh, and it was really cool because he mentioned Victory. And I think Victory is a band oh, that's wow. often overlooked. Uh, you talk about your early days, even, you know, Victory is a band that's often overlooked as very important to German metal. Uh, and at uh, these days it was. I mean, we got three, four successful albums, and uh, we quite we got quite good success. And actually, the good news: I'm just right now in the mixing of the new al uh, Victory album. Oh, excellent! We finished we finished recordings uh, two weeks ago, and as I said, uh, we are right in the mixing process now, and it will be released also via IFM in. AFM. Yes, and 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 yeah, AFM and in the end of September, October, beginning of October, something oh, that's, about. That's good news. That's great. AFM tries to, AFM tries to keep me busy. Oh yeah, yeah, and they're a great label. <laughs> all for metal. Oh Germany. yeah, I, they're, they're, they're fantastic people that are working there. Definitely, I remember uh, I grew up in California, and I remember going to uh, um, <laughs> the record store and just seeing Culture Kills the Native. And not going to Tower Records and not knowing what Culture Killed the Native was, and I saw Victory, but I saw members of Halloween. <laughs> and for me, it was like, oh, okay, well, I got to check this out. <laughs> that, it, it says on the record, uh, members of Halloween? Well, well because uh, the guy that was in Halloween briefly, and then I guess he produced it, and then he was your guitarist, so yeah. Ah, uh, see, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a connection. Yeah, of course, you got to market it somehow. But anyway, that was my introduction to Victory. And I'm grateful because yeah, I became cool. a victory fan after that. And like I said, that uh, article with Malcolm Dome was really good because, you know, Doro talks about how being a female fronted, you know, in, in, war, in Warlock and stuff, how it was just different, you know, than women fr fronted in the U.S. and the rock bands and stuff. But I think it's important yeah. because, you know, you guys did set the standard. Scorpions, Accept, Victory, uh, Warlock, Halloween, those bands set a precedent that, you know, so many bands have imitated but never really – you know, reach that new level. I'm very excited about the new Halloween. Now, on, speaking of AFM, mm -hmm. since they do so much for you, they reissued your first two albums. They reissued Loyal to None and uh, Right in the Guts. Are those remasters or just reissues? That's uh, just reissues. Okay, but they have bonus tracks. It, 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 was, it, it was pretty good master, so <laughs> there's no need Right, for right. It. They were relatively new, right. So they just gave you the bonus track and reissued them when they were originally on yep. Metal Heaven. I take yep. it the metal, the metal Heaven went out of print, and that's why they reissued them. Uh, that was a kind of smaller label, and, and when I signed to AFM, they, they, they asked me, what, what about your f first two albums? I said, hey, talk to this guy, and he was happy to sell them to AFM, and so the whole catalog, let's, put, let's say catalog, is with AFM now. Yeah, right, right, and more accessible and available now in the States. Um, yeah. You've had, you've had Rick Altsy as your vocalist for four of these albums now, not on the debut, but for the, the other ones. Uh, what's it like working with Rick? It's very easy. Uh, uh, he's such a talented, uh, a talented, good singer. And uh, right now, after four albums uh, recording with uh, with Rick Icy, uh, his voice matching is matching to my music very perfectly. I couldn't think about right now for a different singer for my music. If I send out my demo tracks to Rick, he over he. In the same second, he got a, a nice melody, or he can follow my melodies I gave him uh, for vocal lines, uh, for example. And so we come up very easily with the end product. And he's recording, actually, 
this work is in his own little studio in Sweden, and normally I show up one or two weeks in Sweden to work on the final vocals with him face to face. We couldn't do this t uh, th this time because of, of obvious right. reasons. Right. Um, uh, but it's so easy to work with this guy. Cool. I should have met Rick 30 years ago. Really? Wow. I, I wish I would have. Well, he's been in quite a number of bands as well that are very, very influential. Um, does, yeah. he, does he write the lyrics for the songs that you write? Yeah. yeah. I, I, once in a while, or, or on a couple of things, I give him some uh, headlines or, or some a story behind it. So he got an idea what I'm thinking about in, in, in each other's song. Uh, but in the end, as a, as, as a singer, it might be better you do the lyrics because you have to sing them with power. Right. Or you, you have to give the lyrics the melody. And if I come up with some strange verse, uh, he couldn't sing with any power. A lot of S's, a lot of P's in there, a lot of uh, CH's or whatever you say. <laughs> then he might have a problem to, to shout them out, you know. Definitely. So I leave it, leave this up to him, and he, he likes to write some lyrics and yeah. Speaking of so Halloween, let's let 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 let's give, give this uh, the, thing to him. The reins, yeah. Speaking of Halloween, yeah. he did that. Uh, he did that uh, master plan Halloween tribute thing, and it was really interesting yeah. to see his take on you know the the Kiski type the, the Kiski type songs. Now every one of the songs on the album, you know defines the style that I've, I've pretty much heard you play for the last three plus decades. But now Stand Up and Fight, I don't want to rib you too much, but is that your homage to Rainbow, Kill the King? <laughs> the first I time I heard that, this, I was like, I, ex I expected this question so, so badly. Uh, when I started doing the first interviews a couple of years ago, that, that was one of the first question, questions that uh, the, the, the guy gave me. And I said, what? Uh, and I start thinking, and then it sticked into my mind. Oh yeah, it's kind of like two or three bars of uh, "Is it Kill the King" or whatever from Dio and, and, and Mr. Blackmore. Uh, it, it's it's quite. And as when, I, when after the interview, I write, listen back to the song from from Rainbow. I said to myself, "Oh, you might have been influenced by this by these two guys." <laughs> but it, I didn't it do, didn't it do it by obviously. And as I said, unconsciously, yeah, yeah. And as I said, Rick Rick was coming up with this lyric, and it's uh, <laughs> there are all, also there's two words danger, danger in it. Yeah, yeah. The first it's time quite I similar. It. Oh yeah, it's very similar. <laughs> so I hope they I hope they, they won't gonna, gonna sue me. But no, um, no. let's put it this way: uh, big thank you, Mr. Dio in heaven. And big thank you, uh, Mr. Ray, uh, Mr. Rainbow Richie Blackboard. You influenced me uh, that much that I came up. The 30 years later, I came up with two bars of your song. Yeah, and even Cozy Powell. And but it's a, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a funny story. It's a funny story. Now it's kind of like funny. It's your influences. It's wearing your influences on your sleeves. You can't yeah. help but do that. Just like you can't help have accept yeah. riffs and have the, the, the Teutonic, you know, German style. Yeah, yeah. So, would you say Richie Blackmore is one of your biggest influences as far as guitar? Oh yeah, I mean he's just, he's, he's just he's one of the masters, you know. I, agree, totally. I mean, for me, it, my influences had been Gary Moore, uh, Ted Nugent, yes. Eddie Van Halen, and, and and Mr. Blackmore for sure. Also, also, and don't forget um, Tony Iommi. Oh yeah, what about Michael Shanker? No, not not that much. Not that much. Okay. Actually, I have to say, I I, I stepped into Michael Schenker years later okay. when I started to uh, to be interested in 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 soloing, in playing lead guitar. Right. Uh, then for sure you have to listen uh, for for Michael Schenker more than one time. Um, he's a special kind. He's one of a kind. Right, right. Well, I really don't hear much Eddie Van Halen also in the afterlife. Uh, in your style, not a lot of fretboard gymnastics or over the top soloing, or <laughs> but he's still an influence. That's cool. That's good. But yeah, I, I, I did maybe um, the years before I did, did, did a lot of, of this kind of like style, but I never wanted to, be, uh, to play like Eddie. Uh, um, if I listen to a guitar player, I, I, I see what, or at least I try to see what they're doing, and maybe. Just if I, I'm, 
is I just enjoy myself to listen to to other guitar players, but I always wanted to come up with some kind of uh, unique style, definitely, and unique tone and unique riffs and unique songs, and that's what 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 uh, happened uh, in the latest in the later later decades and more often that people say, oh, I can hear that Simon Frank playing, and that's the most you can get, you know. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the balls to the wall. I mean, you, you played on one of the most influential, most popular accept albums of all time. Everybody knows. Balls yeah. Ball. If you if if you say your these are your heroes of of, of the instrument you play, uh, it doesn't mean that you copy them. <laughs> so now you've got Michael Mueller uh, on bass for the last couple albums, and he's in Jaded Heart. Um, what happened to Andre Hilgers? He couldn't drum because of the COVID, or. No, it wasn't about the COVID. Uh, Andre got an offer from Bonfire, another German band, and another project. So he decided, decided for himself, oh, I would rearrange my schedule. <laughs> Let's put it this way. So I had to I had to look for another drummer. Okay. I'm I'm a, kind of like a bit. Of, it makes me a little bit sad that he left the band. But hey, people want to leave, let them go. Right. And I found with Kevin Cott a really talented young guy. He got, gave the album the right guts, what, what it what, what it needs for, and he's so he's just he just put it uh, uh, the, down on the ground in drums, you know, and so he's a really good one. Also, the same happened with Heike Schröder, the other guitar player. Uh, he got an offer from the government actually uh, to work for entertainment to come up with shows for 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 this thing and stuff, and. Hang on, there's a phone call coming in. Oh, yeah, now I'm back. And uh, so I had to replace him with Mike Vecine. And Mike Vecine actually is a comfortable situation for me now because he lives next to my house. So I got a chance to practice with the guy every, every week if I want to. And it's very easy to work with these guys. That's cool. That's cool. So you've got, you know, new members and old blood. That's good. Um, yeah. Is Panzer on hold? Last time I talked to Schmier, he said he wasn't. It's just over. <laughs> Don't think so. <laughs> we just did I a can't great tell you what, cover. I can't <laughs> even think about what. Uh, uh, I wish I wish me the best. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> You guys did a great Gary it's, Moore cover. With sometimes, it's, sometimes it's like if you go for a new partnership, you know, if you uh, sometimes works out, works out, sometimes it doesn't work out that good. So uh, maybe it's uh, sometimes better to end some something right. uh, when you got the chance to end it. Yeah. Well, and it was good. And you don't you don't want don't want to end in a nightmare. Right. Right. Well. His focus will always be destruction. I mean, for 40 years, it's a yeah. German threat. He's quite so. busy with destruction. I'm busy with my project, so, hey. But, but you, never say ne ne you, never. say never. Well, yeah, that's a good attitude. You uh, had Steven Schwartzman uh, on drums for that, Stefan Schwartzman, and, of course, he also played with you on the uh, Accept Reunion albums. So Yeah, uh, yeah. So was he ever a consideration of, of drumming for uh, for the Herman Frank solo, or other than the one album? Actually, I, I didn't get got a chance to, to, to talk to him. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure if he's is still in this uh, uh, double bass stuff, you know. Oh, really? So I'm, I'm not sure about, but maybe it's an idea. Hey, why not? Maybe for the next project, I'm I'm already got in plan, or I'm planning on the next project already. So maybe I should call this guy up. Hey, yeah, good idea. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, there's just so many important German musicians that set a precedent, yeah. you know, and I think, you know, it's one of my favorite bands of all time is Accept. So any element of Accept, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, whether, Mine it be, too. whether it be, you know, Wolf Hoffman, you know, when he goes classical or when I've always I followed, you know, UDO since day one, since Animal House. And I follow, you know, I'm very excited about, you know, Dirk Schneider and the old gang. Ever since you went solo, mm -hmm. um, I started listening to your albums and I was like, oh, my God, this is so awesome. And, you know, I'm so glad the AFM has reissued them. So, you know, I mean, I think it's just a very important, as, as that Malcolm Doan article said. And I even Victory, I think it's, it's great to see that Victory is getting, you know, a little bit more. Oh, yeah. and, you know. Now, what about when you were signed to uh, Mausoleum with your very first band, Hazard? Was that just you like trying to do speed metal, kind of like? 
the German bands were doing at that time or that's been that's been a long time ago. Oh yeah, yeah. That's when you were on Mausoleum Records. That's like when Speed Metal Deca was bands like Corner and bands like, you know, just a lot of, well they're, they're Swiss, but a lot of the German bands were starting to come out that were I, I guess the early days was of young. creator. The early days of creator. I mean I, 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 I has it. I even can't remember, um, um, but I, I do. I'm not like Ozzy. Uh, That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's got parts, uh, man. He should not be working on a new. It album. was. It, it was just just a try to to come up with a new record, uh, with a record, and, and I did. But after this has it, I got this offer from Sinner, so I moved over to Sinner. Sinner. Then I got this offer offer from Victory, so I moved over to Victory. So there was no time for Hazard anymore. Right. And Hazard was like an attempt at speed metal, right? It was definitely that fast. You don't think so? Uh, what speed okay. metal? Well, okay, let me... <laughs> well, kind of like Alex... Uh, Alex Rudy Pell's band before he went solo. Yeah, I was kind of, kind of like that. And you said you went to Center, but you never recorded anything with Center other than singles, right? I recorded um, the Touch of Sin. Uh, the, this was the only LP I. Wrote. I got a copy with my picture and my name on it. Okay, well, on vinyl or on CD? <laughs> on vinyl and CD. I got a <laughs> but at these, on, at I... these days, they hadn't been CDs. So uh, at these days, uh, the original was one on vinyl at, at this stage. Oh, maybe replace me. I should talk to my lawyer. Okay, so with Matt, <laughs> with, with Matt, with Matt Center, you were on Touch of Sin. That's such a long time ago, but a. Uh, as you said, I did so much things in my life. Hey, Mausoleum won't put out an official version of Hazard either. You can only get that like it's just a basically glorified bootleg CDR version of it. So, you know, I'm sure it's all available digital from people ripping the vinyl these days, but it's probably you know <laughs> probably yeah. Yeah, but still, for those of us who like you know to hear the old stuff, um, I didn't hear Hazard back in the day. I was really into German speed metal back in the day. You know, and yeah. I actually missed out on Hazard, and then I started listening to a lot of bands on Mausoleum, and then said, "Wait a minute, this yeah. is Herman Frank." <laughs> yeah, on this record, um, uh, the Steve McNulty showed up. He uh, later on he joined Sweet. I actually really didn't get into Center. The, I didn't get into Center till the mid '90s, though. I guess I was on every every record which comes out of Germany. Well, that's just it. <laughs> except, the States, of, you except, except of the Scorpions. <laughs> right. Well, you got to realize that's it. In the States, in the 80s and the 90s, yeah, the Scorpions and Accept, we could find in the States, no problem. But the the more obscure stuff you couldn't find except for like at record conventions, yeah. it's hard to find stuff and everything like that. So not, not every record is released worldwide, you know. Oh, yeah, especially not in the States. I mean, I paid... That's why I said I know for yeah. a fact my center is a bootleg, and I still paid a lot of money for it. So, but you know, that's what they were all about back then. But, um, but no, yeah. I, but it's good to see you're doing, you know, five successful albums with your solo album since you left Accept, and writing great songs, you know, that just are very catchy and very fun, and you know, very enjoyable. So I'm glad you were able to. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, I mean it is. I did meet you. Uh, and I got signatures and everything when I saw you on the Blood of the Nations tour in Cleveland, and <laughs> I was so excited to meet you. Like, oh my God, he played on Balls of the Wall. This is so awesome. So yeah. You know, so that is, and you were super cool then too. So that was pretty cool. So and it's good to talk to you now. So thank you for taking the time to <laughs> indulge your fans. I appreciate. Absolutely. So see you next time. You bet. Take and care. Thank you so much. For taking your time. Take care, man. Stay healthy. You too. I will. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.